All right, so if you guys know me, you know I love Android and you don't even need to know me to know that because by looking at the screen, you can clearly see an Android logo up on my setup, which clearly says a lot. But nevertheless, I wanted to see what iOS was like after 10 years of not using it. Like literally the last iOS device I used was the iPod Touch 4 generation and it ran iOS 6.1.5, I believe. Uh, but yeah, I miss a lot of iOS updates since then and I want to see what it's like. So I got myself the iPhone 11 Pro last month. Um, I even got the 256 gig model. So this should be plenty to experience iOS to its full capacity, right? So here are some of the things that I really enjoy about the switch from Android to iOS. And I'm also going to mention a few things that I miss about Android. So let's get started. So for me, at least one of the best things about switching over to iOS was getting iOS exclusive features and apps. So you probably hear this a lot, but iMessage is actually good. And I'm not just saying that because having the green bubble is making me feel insecure or having the blue bubble makes me feel better. It's not even about that. If you actually look at it like from an app perspective, the iOS messaging app is way more feature packed than the regular SMS apps you find on Android. Now to give props to Google, they are introducing RCS slowly and it's actually picking up pace, but it's nowhere near feature packed and as baked in as iMessaging is. Like I've even heard people getting the iPhone over and over again each year simply because they don't want to get kicked out of iOS group chats. While that may be an extreme scenario, there is some benefit of having such a properly integrated messaging system. The next reason why I actually love iOS was something that I feared at first. So coming over from Android, I did a lot of customization and you know, I really made it feel like it was a part of me. But switching over to iOS, now my home screen is not too different from the next person. And I thought I would hate it, but I don't. In fact, I've started to grow into it. I kind of like it. I like the simplicity of iOS. I like how it's kind of restrictive because now that there's no app drawer, well, I'm running the iOS 14 beta, so I kind of do have it, but at the same time, I don't really use it because for some reason, I like having my app scattered out on my homepage and I like it just being there because that way I get to see where it's at and I kind of build this muscle memory to where it is. Whereas when I used to use Android, my home screen would just really be empty because I just wanted to enjoy my wallpaper and I would only have my dock applications. So every time I would need to open up most applications, I would have to go through the app drawer. And because how rarely I get to see my app drawer, most of the times I would forget where my apps are located. So I would end up searching for it, which is kind of counterproductive. So in a way, having your apps, you know, kind of laid out on your home screen builds up the muscle memory and visual memory for you to reopen them and it feels more practical to me. The next reason why I actually enjoy iOS is the optimization and the software development on it. So I came from a Pixel experience before, so I used the Google Pixel 2 XL for about a year and a half now, and I really enjoyed how I was able to get day one updates, beta updates, and all that stuff. So in that sense, I didn't really miss anything from Android because I was able to experience that from the Pixel. But a lot of users on Android are not even using the Pixel. They're using Samsung's, Huawei's and phones like that, which have terrible software updates and are very late and pretty much give you no beta versions. So for a lot of Android users, when they switch over to iOS, one thing they'll notice is they'll get actual dedicated software updates that will last for at least four or five years. And that's something really cool to know that your phone is cared for even after four or five years down the line. The other thing is optimization, which kind of goes hand in hand with software. And what I mean by this is when you use applications like social media applications mostly, you'll know that these third party developers only really focus on iOS devices. And the reason is because there's only a few iOS devices to focus on. They can actually decide to spend some time on them and make sure everything looks good and is polished. The thing with Android is that there's thousands of devices out there. So developers can't really spend time and focus on integrating it for a specific line of devices. So in the end, what happens is you get a half-baked device running on your Android phone, which is why things like Snapchat and Instagram have poor camera quality on Android, even though they have a better native camera. All right, so those are kind of like the general things that I enjoy about iOS, but like any other downsides to it. So let me explain what I don't like. All right, so the first thing that I wanna get out of the way that I miss about Android is customization. So what I mean by this is if I was using Android, I could do customization on, on all types of levels. What I mean by this is I can get a launcher from the Play Store and basically change how my phone looks so I can make my 
Samsung phone feel like a Pixel, my Pixel feel like a Huawei, I can do whatever I want, and this is all straight from the Play Store. If I wanted to go the extra route, I can even get a custom ROM and install a completely different operating system look and feel onto my phone. Now, while the iPhone doesn't support launchers, sure, you can jailbreak it and do some tweaks, but at the end of the day, you're really just tweaking what's already baked on. So you're kind of adding icing on top of the cake and the cake is iOS. But with Android, you can literally get rid of the cake and rebake a new one to whatever way you want. And then you can even add icing on top of that. Weird analogy, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys get what I'm trying to say. The next thing is the lack of system controls. So I don't want to get too technical with this, but let me just give you one example. So you guys know that if you're using an Android device and let's say an application is buggy or glitchy, one thing you can simply do is just go into the system settings, apps, find the application there, clear the cache and clear the data, and chances are the application is gonna start working now because basically the application starts fresh, right? But with iOS, you can't really do that. Sure, you can go into your multitask view and you can clear it from there, but that doesn't really let you clear cache and clear data and do all those technical things that usually fix a lot of bugs. So having that restrictiveness is now a downside because now when you know that a fix can be made by simply clearing data, you can't really do it, right? So I guess the only way you can do it is by restarting your phone. That sometimes clears the cache, I believe, but you still can't clear data. At least I don't know how to. And then my final thing that I kind of dislike about using an iOS device now is that they hate universal connectivity. They want you to be in their ecosystem. So for example, if I had a Samsung device, I have a Dell XPS 15 and I have a Fossil smartwatch. My Samsung phone can connect with my Windows computer and I can see my text, I can screencast, it works perfect. And my Fossil smartwatch will work perfectly with my Samsung phone, right? But the fact that I'm on an iOS iPhone now, I can't really have any sort of connectivity with my Windows laptop. I can only do it if I have a Mac. But if I had an Android phone and a Mac, it would have worked together because with the Android messaging system, you can open it as a web browser. But for some reason, iMessage cannot be open as a web browser. So it's like they purposely want to lock you into their ecosystem. And then again, even with my Fossil smartwatch, sure, I downloaded the Wear OS app and I connected it and it kind of works, but it's only a partial connection because I can see my notifications, but I cannot interact with them from my watch. I cannot reply to them from my watch. So it's basically just a display now. So you guys see what I mean? It's really a locked in ecosystem and they want you to use their devices. All right, so there you go. That was my reflection as an Android user, a diehard Android user who just transitioned over to iOS. I kind of like it. I kind of don't like it. I don't know. Maybe I'll grow into it more. But at the end of the day, it's a phone. It's a utility. It gets the job done. You know, you know what I mean? Like there shouldn't be an Android versus iOS for anywhere. You guys should respect everyone's decision and anyone's phone choice because a lot of people buy their phones based on their financial capacity. When I bought my Pixel, I made sure that it was cheaper than the iPhone at the time, but the pictures that it captured were just as good, if not better than the iPhone at the time. You guys get what I mean? So let's not have an Android versus iOS war in the comment section below. Instead, let me know in the comment section below why you like Android or iOS and why you want to stick to whatever you're using right now. Anyways, with that being said, this is your boy Tech Alpha signing out with today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.